Hi, I'm Greg Rhodes with PSIA and I'm here with REI Co-op to cover the essential gear that you're going to need to be successful on the trail. We're going to talk about skis, boots and poles, some comfortable clothing to wear while you're skiing, and maybe some other small essentials that you want to carry with you when you're on the trail. Cross country skiing has two types of skiing, skating and classic. Skate skis are a little shorter than classic skis and a little stiffer. Classic skis are going to be nice and long so you can have a nice gliding surface to go on them. So in any classic ski, we have a kick pocket that when you're classic skiing, you're going to have to compress down and grip the snow. So when you compress the pocket, it doesn't slide this way so you can actually kick your ski off of it, but you want to be able to slide across the snow in this direction. Within a classic ski, there's actually three different styles of grip zone that you're going to use uh, or that you can choose from on your gear. In a touring type ski, which might be a little wider, there might be a grip zone through the middle here that's made up of what we call fish scales, with it going smooth this direction and gripping this way. Another format of mechanical grip is a skin ski. And this is an inlaid piece of mohair skin or synthetic skin in the base and it's really smooth going this way and it's rough against this way. Some traditional classic skis are gonna have a kick pocket that you actually have to apply kick wax to. And so there's no differentiation in that bottom back part of the ski to tell the difference, but you're gonna apply a kick wax, which is sticky to this zone that you'll have your ski shop mark out for you. If you wanna go with a traditional kick wax and kick classic ski, make sure you ask your ski shop about the appropriate wax and how to apply your wax when you get it. For beginners, when you go to a ski shop or a rental shop, many times you'll end up with either a fish scale or a, a skin ski. Um, and this is because they're a little easier to maintain. You don't have to worry about selecting the right kick wax for the temperature and the snow conditions. You can just grab your ski, any snow conditions, and go. When you go to get cross country skis at the shop or in a rental shop, they're gonna ask you your body weight as well as your height. Cross country skis are sized based off of body weight. The reason why we do this is you need to have enough weight to press that ski flat on the snow so it grips the snow so you can move forward. So if you're too light for your ski, you're not gonna have enough weight to push that down flat against the snow and you're not gonna get any kick or any way to move forward. If you're too heavy for your ski, the kick pocket's gonna drag the whole time and you're not gonna have as much glide or stability when you're trying to glide on your ski. Just like skis, there's different boots for skating and classic skiing. A skate boot is gonna have a nice high cuff that's rigid that gives you lateral stability when you're pushing laterally on your skate ski. It also is gonna have a very stiff sole that doesn't allow you to flex the toe because you wanna have a nice solid platform when you're pushing off on a skate ski. A classic boot, on the other hand, is gonna have a lower cuff. It's gonna be soft up there because you want to have as much movement and flexibility in that classic boot as possible. You're also going to have a really soft toe that allows you to flex and naturally kick that ski. Cross country skiing, we don't just use our feet and our skis, but we actually get to use poles as well. A couple things to think about with your poles are going to be the straps as well as the length specific for classic or skate. There's two different strap systems. One is going to be a traditional system like this, and then some are going to have a Velcro system like that. Really, these allow you to fit maybe a, a bigger mitten or a glove in there. Um, these are a little bit more comfortable and allow a bigger platform to push against when you're actually pulling. A classic pull, you're going to size. When you land your poles flat on the ground, standing in your ski boots on a hard surface, that pole, the top of it, should land between your armpit and the top of your shoulder. In contrast, a skate pole is going to land somewhere between your lip and your nose. One tip is you can always buy a longer pole. Just ask your shop to cut them down to your appropriate length. The basic gear that you need for cross country skis are skis, boots, and poles. They are gonna be specific for skate and classic. If you wanna know specifically how to skate or classic, you can check out our other videos. If you're not ready to purchase, most REIs are gonna have a rental fleet that you can go and rent and try the gear before you buy it. Cross country skiing is an aerobic activity in the winter. So you have to manage both heat as well as the cold. So the clothing is gonna be very unique. A base layer that's made as a synthetic or wool that allows your moisture to move away from your skin is gonna be the most important part of it. Make sure your base layer is not cotton and a synthetic or a wool material that'll keep you warm when you're wet as well as in the cold. Depending on how cold the conditions are, you might wanna have a mid layer on. 
A mid layer will be either a lightweight fleece or a lot of times I'll wear a synthetic vest um, just to cover the core part of my body and keep me warm while I'm out skiing. A lot of times we'll also wear a jacket or a shell. Um, in cross country skiing, soft shells are the, probably the best because it does a lot, a lot more breathability than a hard shell. Still, you'll have times where it's snowing, so you wanna have a soft shell that has some way to prevent against moisture soaking yourself in when you're in there. If you're in a really wet or rainy condition, you might actually wanna wear a rain jacket. Just remember that you are gonna have more moisture underneath that and you're gonna get really cold if you're too out there too long. The nice thing about having layers, a base layer and a mid layer, is if you do get hot, you can take off your jacket and just ski with just your mid layer on. Just like your upper layers, your lower layers are gonna have a similar idea. I will always wear long underwear on the bottom that is made of the similar material as my top base layer, as well as then a shell pant that has a similar soft shell characteristics as my top. So a little bit of wicking as well as DWR or water repellent on the front. One nice characteristic to keep in mind for any of your bottom half um, in your pants is to have them a little bit more form-fitting like an athletic pant um, instead of a big baggy alpine pant. That ability allows your legs to move more freely when you're cross-country skiing. Outside of layering, the next important thing is going to be gloves. And gloves are very specific to how cold your hands get. A lot of times I personally ski in a really lightweight thin glove. Um, it fits well on my pull straps and my hands get really hot and sweaty. So I like to be able to have a thin layer glove with me. If it's colder, I'll wear a mitten or a three finger mitten type of thing. Um, some of these are really nice because you can layer actually the mitten with a liner. Next thing on your head, a really lightweight hat, again, of wool or synthetic material um, is nice. A lot of people will wear a headband instead of a hat because they're so hot. I also always wear a buff or a neck gaiter. I can pull it up to keep the wind from going down my jacket and my back or also for the sun protection if it's a really sunny day in the mountains. Finally, socks. Again, just like your base layer, you do not want to have cotton gym socks. You want to have a good pair of wool or synthetic ski socks. Just like any other sport that you have in a nice fitting boot, you do not want to wear multiple layers of socks. If you're in a really cold condition, don't put on two socks. Just get a little thicker sock that has a, a wool in it or something like that that's going to keep your feet warm. Um, but sometimes we also ski when it's pretty warm out, so have a, a thinner layer sock. Sometimes I'll use just a hiking sock or a lightweight cycling or running sock instead of a specific ski sock. One other thing to have with you all the time is sunglasses. These are important one for if it's sunny out to protect your eyes from any sun. Also then on the snow there's a lot of glare that comes up. So a glass that actually has a full protection is really important to have when you're cross country skiing. Another important thing for having glasses on is to protect from snow falling in your eyes when you're skiing. Cross country ski is an aerobic activity that's gonna require you to carry some hydration as well as some food while you're out on the trail. So here are a couple essentials that I think you should have with you while you're skiing. It's easy to carry some kind of gel or maybe a bar or some kind of gummy. It's gonna be nice to have with you that's easy to consume when you're out on the trail, if, especially if it's cold. Also, you're gonna to have to have some kind of hydration. You can start with the most simple and smallest where you can just carry just a simple water bottle. And there is a little pocket to carry some energy gels with you. This is the easiest and lightest that you might carry with you or you might already have in your house. There are some a little bit more cross country ski specific hydration belts that have a water bottle built in with some insulation to keep your water from freezing, as well as a little bigger pocket that can fit both your kick wax if you're using waxable classic skis, as well as more food in there. I also like to carry my phone or any kind of navigation equipment in this pack. Hydration packs are also an easy way to carry your water and any other extra food as well as maybe an extra layer, or if you get too warm, you can shed a layer and put into your hydration pack when you're on a longer ski or you might have changing weather conditions when you're out there. If you're gonna go for a longer ski or at a more remote Nordic Center, you might consider even a larger pack that allows you to carry the 10 essentials for backcountry travel. If you want more information about the 10 essentials, we have a video for that. Before you even go out, start thinking about putting on some sunscreen and you might even wanna carry a small tube of this with you if you're gonna go out for a longer ski. The sun really does reflect back and, and can augment any sun problems to your skin. I also always have lip balm with me, especially in the dry environments. 
These have been all the essential items that you need to go cross country skiing. One final tip, ski ties are a great addition to keep your skis together while you're walking around, but also keep your skis, your ski bases protected when they're in the back of your car on your way to the trailhead. I'm on my way out for a ski and I hope to see you guys out on the trail soon.